An opinion on this in just a second. Uh, can, uh, hang on, I have to refer to all the 19 other items they've done. Uh, we were talking to Elmore Leonard today. Elmore Leonard, really? Yes, oh, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're, yeah. you're, you're like the second most famous person we've talked to. I, I, so, I, I, uh, I bout Elmore you're Leonard. Not, you're not headlining. Yeah. Uh, there are loads of, he's, he's looking for his Irish relations. That was, uh, Daryl Breen is with us, given Sorry. that he's, he's just bought it in there anyway. Uh, um, <laughs> uh, loads of Leonard's in Roscommon. My uncle was a Leonard, says Magsy. Leonard and Moon are from Skibbereen in West Cork. Uh, says another uh, text there. Uh, somebody else says, uh, did you really say, use the phrase the old saw, as in the old saying? I've only read that in Shakespeare. Never heard it spoken. You old Elizabethan you. Indeed, yes. I'm here in my, in my, in my tights and everything. Uh, Sean, I agree. Underwear should be changed daily. However, I think if you get hit by a bus, car, things will change automatically, uh, says John. Yes, if you do follow through the logic of that, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever, given that your nice clean underwear would be, one assumes, automatically uh, somewhat ruined. Uh, Sean, these are Homer's. This is Homer Simpson's thoughts on pigs. Homer, are you saying you're never going to eat any animal again? What about bacon? Lisa, no. Homer, ham? Lisa, no. Homer, pork chops? Lisa, a, Dad, those all come from the same animal. Animal, uh, Homer. <laughs> oh yeah, right. A wonderful, magical animal. Says Tony. Thanks very much for that, Tony. And what happened to uh, uh, five in the bath every Saturday night? Uh, that was the way it worked in my house. Or have a wash with a hand cloth every other day. Uh, says Anya. Ah, what days it was to be alive then. Anyway, uh, Dara, um, Dara's here because you're playing in Vicar Street. I assume you yeah, sold yeah, all the stuff. tickets. And yeah, for this run of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, right. The, uh, um, you, hang on, sorry, do, do you know what was very depressing was when she when that uh, texter went uh, or a wipe of a hand cloth says on you yeah. there's something more <laughs> depressing with the fact that it was on you rather than says Morris uh, or some say, you know some old lad from the countryside and uh, it is always weird having not heard the initial part of the show goes Sean you're right underpants should be changed once a day going what national discussion was that, that uh, there was that? a survey that was done that one in five men don't change their underpants every day and then Henry McKean uh, went out and asked people on the street and alarmingly found a large uh, oh number Lord. of men who kind of gleefully admitted to having not changed their underpants that day and didn't say any, any minimum, harm minimum, minimum, minimum absolutely absolute minimum yeah yeah, 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 yeah. It, it's good to have standards oh you do um, uh, nuclear power the, yeah. Japan is not ruined uh, the Fukushima is, is, is very much under control the, uh, bizarrely enough the incident in Fukushima was one that changed George Mombiot who writes for the Guardian, who's mm. very much an environmental campaigner, changed his view of it entirely. And the kind of this thing can withstand um, that kind of earthquake. We may we need we may need to look at this more often. I mean, the record of nuclear power is bears a better scrutiny than the knee jerk reaction to it. It's not all you know China syndrome stuff. So the uh, the notion that Japan is ruined in any way because of this is isn't true, unfortunately. The the uh, uh, um, and not like I mean, obviously the damage done by the by the thing itself. Yes. Uh, if, if you want to check out this guy called Jim Al Khalili, who's a uh, scientist in. Uh, so the London who's, who's and he's on Twitter and he's available for, and he went and did it, did it visited for Horizon the BBC mm. and, uh, and offered a much more measured view of what it is I mean yes there are zero point energy isn't really like that thing called Cassini effect not, I'm not sure you could drive that much uh, on a large scale with this uh, but uh, <laughs> but uh, it, it is I, we may need to examine uh, nuclear power as, as fossil well I think I think Monbiot had uh, changed even before uh, he, that it, he, he basically come to the conclusion that you know we weren't doing enough in terms of generating, you know, alternative energy sources, and the political reality was the quickest and easiest fix to this is nuclear power. Yes, it is, but actually that may not just be political reality, it may simply be that the, the inefficiencies involved in setting up uh, uh, renewable sources of energy. I, I, I'm not an expert on this, I'm mm. just saying, I'm, I'm just stepping in the words, Japan is ruined, uh, <laughs> the, uh, which is very different, is not, but the uh, but it may be a case of the inefficiencies of, of building them and, uh, you know, that you just don't get as much out of it as you need, mm. uh, and we may need to long term look at nuclear I suppose everybody knows now that you, you, you what did you study again in college that you were I did mathematical physics but, yes. but like, I wouldn't claim to be an expert on it. I did yeah. mathematical physics 20 years ago uh, it makes me more of a fanboy than in any way an expert I always defer to those who have better training and more education and so what does that make you a fanboy of uh, all maths all sciences um, the uh, it, it just you know I'm an enthusiastic advocate of uh, ev evidential based processes uh, yeah. basically <laughs> I am a scourge uh, a sceptical scourge of, uh, I hope, uh, of people who sell nonsense that has no basis, you know, pretending. People who, who would love to pretend to be doctors and, and sell you, you know, water 
posing as medicine. Uh, yeah, and, it would be Hillary McKeith and people like that. But Gillian, oh, Gillian McKeith. McKeith. Yeah, I don't exactly. know what Hillary McKeith is up to. Uh, uh, no, no, I would no, like was to a, just listen to myself in the comments you made. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but for instance, who are people who are selling the things? Like oh that? God, listen, uh, homeopathy is something I, I'd have issues with. Uh, things like Reiki and crystals, which are all harmless enough, except if you stop people actually taking medicine. That's the the usual problem with them. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so weirdly enough, the show currently has me in a scrap with astrologers. The um, because th we did this show stargazing live uh, myself and Brian Cox genuinely knows mm. a lot of what he's talking about the, uh, which is on again this week on BBC the second uh, year of it uh, where it's basically an astronomy show where we talk about planets and the shape of the universe and exoplanets and the search for life and all these kind of exciting sciencey things and w during it last year I pointed out why horoscopes don't work very simple little thing going by the way they don't work for this reason and he brilliantly Brian Cox said well we're on the BBC now and obviously for the sake of balance I must also say that yes, horoscopes don't work. <laughs> uh, and it was a delightful moment that we really enjoyed because there were hundreds of letters from angry astrologers saying you haven't properly represented the, you know, the basis of our crazy medieval soothsaying. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and they chased it all the way up to the top of the BBC and I read the report from the equivalent of the Director General's office, which was essentially just go away. Uh, and it was, <laughs> please, this is, you know, I got, a, I got a stack of complaints here about Top Gear. I got to get through these. <laughs> I am not spending more time trying to play. I got the Mexicans. I got the Indians. I got lots of people giving out about Clarkson just because he pointed out. Because the phrase they used, the most withering phrase they used was, we believe that Mr. Green may correctly reflect the scientific establishment's view of astrology. Hmm. Uh, which is the, listen, they, they, oh, stop. Uh, it said she was a tool. <laughs> but yeah, given the BBC's remit that they do have to have balance, etc. Do, do, do oh, they no, then have no, to have an astrologer on no, no, with Brian no, Cox there's, there's going? Nothing, there's nothing that says that the remit has to have balance in the sense that we must give 50-50 representation to every minority viewpoint if it counters with the uh, the, the orthodox viewpoint. Because right? the, mm. the orthodox viewpoint is predominantly an evidence-based one. The, uh, you know, we know it doesn't work, right? <laughs> it's just a phase of the, you know, it's a bit of crack to open the papers and go, oh, what's ahead for me? Oh, some vague ruminations about stuff, right? Like, yeah. you know, if it worked, we'd all be using it, right? Mm. It, there'll be Wall Street would be filled with, with astrologers. NASA would have astrologers. If it worked, <laughs> there's many people would be using it. Like psychics, all right? The, uh, the, if it worked, if we could genuinely talk to the dead, what historian wouldn't be using Sally Morgan to do research for <laughs> papers? No one is doing it. That's it. Yeah. And, and it is based on, uh, well, I mean, a lot of stories based on the idea that the world is flat anyway, because the, 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 the stars move through some sort of oh, circular yeah. firmament. Well, listen, the, the, the point I mean is that, you know, in a year's time, we're, Earth is back in the same point. Nothing else is. So therefore, the idea that you born in February have anything to do with the guy who was born in February a year earlier yeah. is, is clearly listen, listen this is you know and you find yourself doing this and they go oh but you haven't read the entire thing and I just get the sense of oh god there's more you've written more about this <laughs> they, oh and I know people think god it's terribly smoked to have this attitude but you know if, if we can't just dismiss stuff if we can't get to the point in our evolution where we go right enough with this nonsense they, uh, let's mm. get on with things and, no, so the BBC has no obligation to open its doors to everyone to make it seem like there's a 50-50 Stuff. Do you feel the same about religion? No, religion is a different thing. I, I don't think there's a. I'm more like while I'm not religious, I'm, I'm you know I'm very declared. You think it's atheist. nonsense. I, for me, <laughs> it wouldn't work as a thing. <laughs> but I'm slightly more respectful of, of, of the community element and all and all that and the history hmm. of the. But I, but no, I wouldn't. You know, I wouldn't. I wouldn't raise a child in, in a religion. The, yeah, I have, because I would just be giving them a thing that you have to tell them isn't true. Later <laughs> on, <laughs> sorry. I was being really happy, you know. Oh, you know, I'm not Dawkins. I'm not angrily. Yes. Uh, yeah. And yeah, the yeah. Thing, but the, uh, and they're not, you know. But I just, I, it's, it's not for me. Like the, uh, they're, they're literally, and it isn't out of any bad experience or any kind of running from it. it just literally, I, if I look into my heart, the dial for religiosity, it just doesn't move. It just, I yeah. don't see, don't see it, don't get it. Good luck. No. Uh, Texter says, does Dara have any advice for any aspiring young comic who has a similar style to Anthony Jazelnik and Jimmy Carr, i.e., extremely politically incorrect gags? Oh, well, listen, though, you know, there's always go for politically incorrect gags. Uh, there is an argument there. Some people really get off on the idea that comedy is only about pushing boundaries and stuff like that. And my aspiring for any comic is A, find your voice, which uh, may, as it turned out, not be that of Giselle Nick or Carm. Uh, I'm bluffing Giselle Nick, I have no idea who he is. I have no idea who he is either. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, <laughs> but the, uh, but uh, it, it's you know, comedy, people always say, how do you get into it? It's remarkably easy to get into. You just, you, you know, there are open mic nights, no matter what 
you know, if you're in Dublin or if you're in London or if you're in, 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 there, are some, there are some clubs in Cork and maybe more here you have to be in Dublin but there are small clubs and you get gigs in small clubs and you and you gig your way up uh, but the nursery slopes are quite gentle as much as you only have to do five minutes and then maybe do ten minutes and then, you know, mm. uh, carry on from there. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm presuming it's the same thing. Some things may be more difficult because I think there are more people trying to do it now than there were back in the mid-90s. Mm. It's less, it's not regarded as a crazy career choice in the way that it was. Um, but in fact, I don't think we even did it really really as a career choice is more of a kind of you know this is why I was doing Echo Island for God's sake <laughs> yes. the, the gigs. The, yeah, so, so I, I remember I remember I, when I left I think it was a Sunday world I wrote I said this I'm not going to do this I'm going to I wrote a column for them for about three years and then so, quietly rang and said I'm, I'm not going to be able to do this I wasn't at that stage three years into a comedy career I didn't have the confidence to go I'm going to be a comedian <laughs> three years I'm being paid to do it I still thought this is a ridiculous thing do you ever think you'll give it up? Uh, the touring you might they, uh, because it's a long time away from home mm. they, and it's a, it's a I'll, I, I, you know ask me in November when this one's finished because I'm still a touring at the scale I was before I had uh, little kids you know and I, it may be that you miss a lot of time at home they, so uh, I said they, between now and November how I'll do 140, Much. maybe 150 Whoa. shows. And it's a lot of nights in in hotels. I mean, in the UK, I can drive back, but yeah. like, I mean, there's there'll be ten weekends in Dublin, like the and then the Killarney and uh, Killarney and Cork and Castlebar to do as well, now. and so that's their their way. There's no two ways about it. That's your way for that. You do mm. Scotland, do Northern Ireland. There's a lot of time away. It goes far north as Newcastle and Liverpool. You, you're not coming back. You're doing four nights in Manchester. There's a lot of time away, and I'll see whether that drives me batty like the uh, at the end of it. That's the one thing that would stop it. I tell you, there is. Some people think if you get into your forties, you know, maybe your your energy goes, your anger goes, your hunger goes, whatever. And that might be a case. I found that you know, you, because I think when you start doing the family thing, your time scale changes. So mm. you start thinking in terms of the eighteen years is going to raise it, and things become more geological. <laughs> so you don't have like the show I wrote, Turning Thirty, which is exactly ten years ago, was full of event. It was literally I saw the set list of it. I got out of notes, and it was surfing, uh, scuba diving. Uh, mm. Right, there was a story about going up to a volcano and looking at a volcano in Costa Rica and being angry because a nurse uh, and a, a, from Cork and her IT boyfriend came out at exactly the same moment <laughs> and stood just left me and went, get me in the volcano in the photo as well. Uh, and, uh, and but it was all events. It was all I was a man. I was a man in his twenties doing all these things and whatever. And you just don't do that stuff. Mm. You don't tick off stuff in the same way. So it becomes more argumentative, more reflective, more you know. Hopefully, same funny and you get good fun. But whether or not you just don't do as many things um, because you're on a different scale now you're looking after somebody else well, but I suppose with, with, with writers with musicians uh, you can always say somebody reaches a peak at some yeah, point yeah. and then and then you know you turn into a covers band of yourself you can well you see if, if you're a band and yeah you, the, the whole, that was the, your man's theory in train spotting uh, which is you're, you're very good until you get as good as you're going to get and you're never as good as get again mm. right? and that's certainly the case I always feels with music not so sure with writers I mean Philip Roth's later work true yeah, yeah. We're, we're all I'm Philip Roth or comics in general mm. but I think there's you can draw more you get better at spotting what is funny and things and how to tell the stories the technical mm. part of it gets better by you just maybe that you lose that initial burst of energy or they've heard you and they've got the idea that's another thing that they go oh well you're doing this stuff at exactly the same level but they kind of go oh yeah I know him he go, goes air a lot and does a bit of audience <laughs> chat <laughs> so we've seen you that we still we'll do, do that yeah <laughs> we, 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 not as much uh, yeah but, no, uh, no, 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 but there is, it was a holding pattern to shut you up. Yeah. It's how that developed. But the, uh, the I think you just uh, I think there is a point with all comics who you go. Yeah, we've seen him a couple of times. That you know is he mm. still? Yeah, that's yeah, that's great. Sure. Good luck to him. The, uh, so. so what would you do? Did you enjoy writing the book? I did enjoy writing, but it's a case of finding something that I found equally interesting to write about. And this was just kind of a mishmash of travelogue stuff and a bit of popular history and you know the. So it was I, I found it quite an interesting topic mm. something that bang on I don't know what the next one would be like, I mean, I'm not in any rush it's not like I yeah. had to you know it did well but didn't do well that they're pushing me for something else and it wasn't like um, people who have a, a popular autobiography have to then mine the last six months to get the next one. Like, but I, I, it'll be, I may do more travel writing. I may do something along those lines again. They, uh, but it would have to be something I was sufficiently interested in. It's more interesting to me to write the shows. Mm. Yeah, that's more. Uh, and writing the shows is, is that a process? Do you have a routine for writing them now, or is yeah. it kind of cobbled together? It, well, not cobbled together, yeah, but yeah. now you have disparate bits. And then no, they're, they're, they still come out disparate. Unfortunately, the the uh, you know you don't ever end up putting the entire show this year will be on the topic of. 
I don't yeah. mean the word rice <laughs> into my head. The, <laughs> that means rice for an hour. Mm. The, um, so they all come out this, but I can spot the join um, even in the show now because we've only done about six nights. Uh, I can spot the, where it's all the, the little leg, the little Lego pieces, the jigsaw pieces mm. that I've made and, and, and squished together to make the routines. Hopefully by the end it feels more organic, but um, sometimes they emerge beautifully and sometimes they are hammering out in a room on your own in the middle of night just trying to get anything. Mo- a lot, it takes a huge leap when you get into a room like Vickers street because yeah. it's just different to 80 people in a room in um chiswick in london where i live like the uh on a cold night uh in, and and you're going and you're clearly standing there with a sheaf of papers in your hand going how about this is this is it <laughs> <laughs> so you still do that kind of test in front oh, of yeah, smaller yeah. audiences you have to yeah. you have to test them because some of them automatically go but other things you find yourself going well it doesn't work here but i know that'll work when i'm in a big room and i can give it some more uh, energy well, and momentum something, that yeah. can carry it through like but they randomly there's i think i did in the encore last night where i did jokes that have no place anywhere else in the show because there's <laughs> two of them and they're bugging me i have nowhere to put them i'm very fond of them and they're and like they don't work and like it was really weird because because i'm just single jokes that don't no work isn't it isn't it a pain <laughs> and there's a laugh because the sheer awkwardness of the gear change into hey have you has anyone noticed uh, i think it's funny that they like uh, in, in, people go to chiswick there's all sorts of people in chiswick said i sell that dark Really, he's rubbish. Well, he's really yeah, cool. Cool. He's, he's, he's reading them off a sheet. He's all over the place. <laughs> yeah, no, was stuff they wasn't. They were routines. They were like random <laughs> gags. You know? uh, we're going to go and do movies and booze after the break. Would you like to say? Yeah, by, by all means. What, what booze are we doing? Uh, we're going to drink beer today. Oh, I've come the wrong week, haven't I? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's pretty. posh beer, though. It's not like... You know, it's not like <laughs> we're just going to yeah. drink, you know... T- 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 tins of tenants. Ten- yeah, ten- 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 t- this this eighth tin of tenants is slightly... This is mature delightfully. Okay, fantastic.